Welcome to JG Woodcraft. I'm Jedi. And today we're going to talk about to dado or not to dado, to route or not to route, or one of the other methods you might use to carve a trench through a piece of wood so you can stick another piece of wood in that trench. We're going to go through the ups and downs, do's and don'ts, tips and pros and cons. If you have any thoughts or additional inputs you'd like to provide down in the comments, that'd be much appreciated because I can always learn something new and hopefully we can learn from each other. So grab a drink and let's get started. We're gonna dado out uh, this piece where the our bottom plywood is gonna slide in. You can see that there. To do that, we're gonna replace this blade with this monster. So we put one of these on either side. And then these bad boys go in between as spacers to get it to the width we want. Dados are really cool, but I also am aware that they're not available everywhere in the, in the world. Like some countries, I guess, have actually outlawed them. So uh, that was a new thing to me when I was looking that up, but apparently so. The other way you could do this, um, you could run it multiple times through the, the table saw with just a flat top blade. Uh, another thing you could do is uh, use a router and a jig to, to cut it through that way. So I debated, and I'll keep going back and forth on whether to use the router or use the, uh, use the dado. Maybe we'll do one of each and see which comes out with the better edge. What do you think? Let's do that. So we'll turn this into a should I dado or should I route <laughs> episode. All right, so I'm going to get to changing this router or changing this blade out. Obviously, first steps always make sure this bad boy is unplugged. Never, ever try and change a blade with it plugged in for any reason whatsoever. Uh, mine is an older table saw and doesn't have a, uh, a break, so I have to kind of use a piece of wood or a screwdriver to loosen it up. I prefer to use wood if I can because I'm less likely to screw up my blade. Occasionally I'll have to stick a screwdriver blade in there to just to break it loose. So the way this works, we've got one blade on the inside and one on the outside. See this side says this side out. I almost did it backwards. Oh, never mind. It's this side out. Both of them like this. But so actually, yeah. <laughs> My side so this way. That's that way. So each of these guys, so this one's a 16th. Each of these is an eighth. So we want to get to three quarters. And then I believe this guy is an eighth of an inch as well. Yep. So one of these. There's a quarter. One of the things you want to do is stagger these. You don't want them to hit the the uh, blade tips there. Okay. Look, okay, I'll have washers. I guess they don't. No, oh, here's washers. Okay. So that gives me two eighths quarter, All right? Over there. And you just stack these inter
this. These things are so mean looking. <laughs> okay. So I got one, so there's a quarter, there's another quarter, so a half inch, there's another quarter. This should give me my total width of three quarters of an inch. Unless those little rings make it too much. That looks right. Okay. Son of a biscuit. Been a miracle if I didn't do that. <laughs> no. The cool thing with the alignment on these is just you don't want any of the blade tips to be touching to each other, right? So. All right, cinch it up. As always, test a piece of scrap. Before testing, before cutting your main piece. Right. So these are gonna go on three quarter inch pieces. I don't need that much. Um, I think I'd actually be Quarter five sixteenths. I think a quarter. I love these setup blocks. So you... All right. And never trust that these things aren't going to come through or something happen. Always use a push stick or some form of helper. It's just not worth your fingers. can see this. So there's the dado edge. What I can tell you about it is that one of my blades might must be just slightly deeper. This guy here in the middle than the others for some reason. Um, in my application that would be just fine. I'm not worried about that is we're just sliding a piece of material in and we're going to glue it up. But if I did want that to be a completely flat surface, that might be a problem. All right, so let's take, let's go over and do a test piece over on the router. Over here on the router, do a setup on this. Same thing. It's the same but different. Right? <laughs> A little vocal. All right, now we are going to go with leave this bad boy three quarter inches all by itself. Same thing with the router. Make sure it's not plugged in. And get started.
Collection. Because if I don't do that, I will have widgets everywhere. We're going to go ahead and do a run through and uh, do a comparison on the between the dado stack and the router blade. Okay. Put my little safety pin in here. I like leave it out so that my grandkids don't decide to uh, turn on the router when they come out to visit the shop. <laughs> All right. Okay, so which is better? Dado stack, router bit. Well, let's see, in terms of its ability to on the material, seems like either one's gonna work right. Uh, so they're both just as good from that perspective. They both do the job that you need done. Uh, a couple differences. The router has a much smoother track. I don't have those extra grooves like I had with, with my data stack in particular. Uh, that's not a problem for my application. I don't care. In fact, it might actually be a little bit better for glue up. Uh, but I don't, it, it, either way, right? So, but if you need it smooth, the router was definitely a better go. Uh, the other thing I would say, if you need to go to a point where you can go, stop, go to the other point and stop, the router is going to be better for that. Whereas the data stack, you're just running it through. That being the case, if you're doing a lot of material or doing lar long stuff, uh, the dado stack's probably gonna be more efficient, gonna go faster. So uh, I think in my, for me, I'm gonna use the dado stack to finish up these rails because uh, that gives me the, the faster progress and I don't have to have a stopping point. The other thing I would say for me that I noticed was going through the router, I have a little more tendency to wobble. Um, so you end up with a little bit, maybe not 100% perfect, although it's pretty darn close. Uh, whereas I, I didn't have as much of that tendency to wobble on the, the dado stack. So I guess it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, or the specific use case. So uh, either one, router bit or uh, dado stack, both gets the job done. Just depends on what job you need specifically done. Like I said, in this case, I'm going for efficiency using long material. Uh, if I was doing something small or I have to have stop start points, I'm going to use the router with some stop locks. All right. So with that, I'm going to get moved on to running these things through the, the data stack. So hopefully you all found that useful, learned some new things or had some reinforcement around uh, when to use a router versus a data stack, some of the, the pros and cons, do's and don'ts. Feel free to leave comments down below. Uh, we, you know, I can always learn something new. Even if you have some contradictions, we'd, I'd love to have that conversation. Uh, everything's useful both to me and our viewers. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that notification bell so you can find out about the next video. And now that I'm done with the uh, sharp tools and rotating blades, now I can uh, go have a drink. You all have a great day.